Let's take a look at how to add and subtract fractions. Subtract, simplify your answer and write it as a proper fraction or as a whole or mixed number. Okay, so when we're adding or subtracting fractions, we need to have a common denominator, which means the number in the bottom of the fraction needs to be the same. And you can see that right now it's not because I have a three and a seven. So the first thing I wanna do is rewrite those numbers with a common denominator. So I wanna think of what is the smallest number that three and seven both go into? And the smallest number that three and seven both go into is 21. So I wanna rewrite both of these numbers over a denominator of 21. Now to keep the fractions equivalent, if I change the denominator from three to 21, that means I multiplied the denominator of the first one by seven. So to keep it equal, I have to do the exact same thing on the top and also multiply that one by seven. So seven times one would give me seven. So notice seven over 21 has the same meaning as one over three, right? Both of those numbers are multiplied by seven. And then I'm gonna do the same thing on my second fraction. I can see that to get to 21, I had to say seven times three, right? Three times seven gives me 21. So since I multiplied the denominator or bottom by three, I have to do the exact same thing on the top. So three times four would give me 12. And now that I have them rewritten with the same or common denominator, now I can subtract. So when you subtract, the denominator is gonna stay the same. That's gonna stay at 21. And I simply subtract the numbers on the top. Now seven minus 12 is gonna give me a negative number, right? Because 12 is smaller than seven. So seven minus 12 is gonna give me negative five. Now the negative, you can put it in the top or the bottom, or you can just leave it out front. So that gives me negative five over 21. Okay, this time we wanna add. So notice, I do not have a common denominator. One is two and one is seven. So my first step is to rewrite those numbers with a common denominator. So what is the smallest number that two and seven both go into? Or another way to say that is the least common multiple of two and seven. Well, they both go into 14. So I'm gonna rewrite both of those over 14. So notice two times seven would give me 14. If I multiplied the denominator or bottom number by seven, I have to do the same thing on the top. And on the top or numerator, seven times one gives me seven. So seven over 14 has the same meaning as one half. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here to rewrite five over seven. Well, to get to 14, I had to multiply seven times two. Since I multiplied the bottom by two, let's do the same thing on the top. And two times five gives me 10. So 10 over 14 is another way to write five over seven. And now that my common denominator is 14, right? My denominators are the same. Now I can just leave that common denominator on the bottom and simply add across the top. Seven plus 10 gives me 17. Okay, so seven over 14 is an improper fraction. And that just means that the top number is larger than the denominator or bottom number. Notice they told me to write it as a proper fraction, whole or mixed number. So 17 is not gonna divide evenly by 14. So I can't write it as a whole number, but I can write it as a mixed number. So to write it as a mixed number, well, how many times does 14 go into 17? 14 goes into 17 one whole time, and then it has three left over out of 14. Right, since 17 minus 14 is three, that leaves me with one and three over 14. Okay, we wanna add one fourth plus one half. Okay, well the first thing I wanna do is to find my common denominator. To do that, I'm gonna find the least common multiple between four and two. So the smallest number that four and two both go into is four. So that's gonna become my common denominator. So 
if I'm writing both of these as a fraction over four, notice the first one doesn't need to change at all. It's already over four. So that's simply gonna stay as one fourth. For the second fraction, well, to get from two to four, I had to multiply the denominator by two, right? Two times two would give me four. So I have to do the exact same thing in the numerator or top and say two times one is two. And hopefully you would agree that two fourths is the same as one half. And now I'm ready to add. Now when you add, the denominator does not change. That's gonna stay a four, and I simply add across the numerator, right? One plus two is three. So this gives me three out of four. Okay, we wanna add one third and one half. Now notice the denominators or bottom numbers are different. I want them to match, so I have to find my common denominator. So what's the smallest number that three and two both go into? Six. So that means I'm gonna write both of these as a fraction over six. Okay, well to get from three to six, I would have to multiply by two, right? Two times three gives me six. So whatever I did on the bottom, I have to do the same thing on the top. So two times one gives me two. Okay, in my second fraction, to get from two to six, I had to multiply by three, right? Three times two gives me six. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing on the top, and three times one gives me three. Now, when I add these, the bottom number doesn't change, right? That just tells me the whole thing. The whole thing is still out of six, and I'm adding two parts of that plus another three parts, or a total of five parts out of six. Okay, I wanna subtract four-fifths minus one-fifth. Now, our first step is to usually rewrite them with a common denominator. But if I look at these, they already have a common denominator. I write that as CD because they already have denominators of five. So I can simply keep that denominator the same and subtract in the numerator or top. Four minus one gives me three. So the answer would be three-fifths. Okay, I wanna add four sevenths plus seven tenths. Okay, so I wanna figure out what is the smallest number that both seven and 10 go into? And that would be 70. So I wanna start by rewriting both of these fractions with a denominator of 70. Okay, for the first one, four sevenths, to get from seven to 10, I'm sorry, from, from seven to 70, I had to multiply by 10, right? 10 times seven gives me 70. If I multiply by 10 on the bottom, I also have to multiply by 10 on the top, and 10 times four gives me 40. For my second fraction, if the 10 became a 70, I had to multiply by seven, right? Seven times 10 is 70. If I multiply by seven on the bottom, I also have to multiply by seven on the top, and seven times seven gives me 49. Okay, now that my denominators match, I can keep that 70 on the bottom and simply add across the top. On the top, 40 plus 49 gives me 89. Now again, this is an improper fraction, meaning the top number is bigger than the bottom number, so I wanna change it to a mixed number. 70 goes into 89 one time, okay, right? One times 70 is 70, so that leaves me with 19 because 89 minus 70 gives me 19 left over out of my 70. So this is one and 19 over 70.